Hey guys, experimenting with the audio power amplifier output stage. Just kind of cobbling it together. I'm not really going to build a permanent circuit. It's just a breadboard project. Just grabbing things I can find on my bench and my part bins and such. Not using anybody's design. I'm just kind of seeing if I can get this thing going myself. Not going to do any in-depth calculations or anything. If, if I was actually building a proper amplifier, you need a lot of calculations, looking at data sheets and things, because you want to build an amplifier. You know, it's obvious, obviously it's not going to um, explode on you when you plug it in. It'll sound good and uh, be stable without oscillations and such. Well, this is what I have so far. You know, uh, this is the output stage. It's a, of course, it's a push-pull type. The upper stage being the push and the lower stage being the pull. The upper stage handling the positive portion of the sine wave. And when it swings negative, the lower stage turns on and handles the lower part of the sine wave. And, uh, of course, there is some crossover distortion, so these stages are biased a bit to be turned on just a little bit to con you know to conduct a little bit of current from positive all the way through down to the negative rail and i don't have the bias circuit drawn in yet i got to figure out what to do you know how to uh you know i have to either use a transistor or uh, you know a few diodes because I have to get these transistors turned on just a little bit. It's a Darlington pair, so it's I have three, uh, two base emitter junctions to conduct through to turn on. So I need, li <clears throat> pardon me, I need like uh, uh, roughly 1.2 volts aside. So I have to get that all figured out. Well, I grabbed some parts I had laying around. Uh, figured out what transistor is what using the meter and you know polarities and things of the transistors and I had some loose transistors you know, like these here and determined the polarity and hooked it up here and at first you know on the board here I just have the uh, upper part of the circuits so all it is is just a uh, Darlington and emitter degeneration resistor connected. I also connected a current limiting resistor and an LED to test the circuit. So let's see what happens here. Now if it's correct, it won't turn on because the base has no biasing or uh, any signal or anything. So let's see what happens. Uh oh, that's not good. The LED comes on. Well, I probably have this transistor here not put in right. So I'll uh, turn off the camera here and monkey around with it and get that fixed. Then I can continue getting the bottom part going. Okay, it wasn't the the transistor, it was this little resistor right here which is this one I had it connected to the collector so it was just conducting around and lighting up the LED so I put that in the proper position and I put these two little copper leads and I, you can tell it's a Darlington circuit because just touching it lights the LED up If I squeeze hard, the LED gets brighter and brighter. So yeah, that seems to be working just fine now. So I'll go ahead and build out the, uh, the pole part of the circuit, the bottom part, and uh, get that working and go from there. Okay, the lower stage is set up, 
If I do the finger test, it's working. Now I'll get some heat sinks on these and do some unbiased tests, meaning uh, no bias current will be flowing through these transistors. It'll be uh, pure class B. And we'll see what happens. Okay, here's the high tech heat sink solution. I have a piece of plastic on this one, keep them separated. I have it hooked up to the scope. Splits uh, power supply now. And we'll see what we get. Function generator on input, by the way, going through a capacitor. So, yeah, let me explain this a little more. So I just connected the bases of the transistors together. Darn lights flickering. I did add a capacitor here. And I will see what we get with the function generator. Okay. So as I turn it up, look at that. It's clipping. I bring up the supply voltage. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, I think the function generator is what's doing the clipping because the volume or the uh, signal level is maxed out. So yeah, it's the function generator. Look at that crossover distortion. Those Darlingtons. They don't have that 0.7 volt base to emitter junction to overcome. They have 1.2 volts. Or 1.4, whatever it actually is. Let's try sawtooth. There's the sawtooth waveform. Yep, and that's why we need the bias, because this would sound terrible if we tried to play music. All right, now I'll figure out how to bias this thing. Okay, I have a rudimentary bias circuit set up. This is not ideal by any means. I have four diodes in series and at each end there's a 2.7k resistor and the reason there's four diodes is because I have two base emitter drops in the uh, Darlington output stage so I have to you know add two resistors for each one so that turns you know that gives me my uh, 1.2 volts or 1.4 whatever just enough to turn these transistors on and these kind of set the current you know trying a lower value would mean more bias current flowing because there's more current flowing through here which you know it tends to raise the diode voltage just a bit to turn these transistors on more well, this is not an ideal circuit because as I increase the supply voltage, more current flows and more that causes more bias current to flow in the output. So I really need a constant current source set up here and uh, might use a transistor here to set the bias current. And normally down here is the Class A amplifier that brings the uh, signal into this stage. Well, um, I guess we'll try it out here. I forgot to mention earlier that I do have an 8 ohm load connected to the output. And um, the bias current now is well with the supply voltage 
yeah, about six, five, six volts, plus minus five, six volts. That were probably around 30 milliamps. Problem is, if I turn it up higher, then the, the bias current really goes up. I really should use higher resistor values here so I can run it at higher voltages. And in a later video, I will uh, work on the constant current circuit for this. Okay. Well, my function generator doesn't quite put out enough um, voltage for this. You have to remember, this circuit has no voltage gain. It's a current gain type circuit. Normally your voltage gain is performed in earlier stages in the amplifier. So what I'm going to do is use my lab amp. It's an LM1875. And I'm taking my uh, function generator input down around into its input. And then we'll take the output and go through this capacitor here and this 1K resistor. So what happens here, as the voltage rate increases here, it's pulling more towards the positive side and less on the negative. So this increases the current here and conducts in the positive half of this sine wave that's coming in. And when it goes negative, it causes more current to flow in this side and of course you get your negative half from the bottom part of the push-pull amplifier so in a nutshell that's how that works but enough gibbering I will turn on the function generator and see what it looks like hey that is much better isn't it I can turn this up. There's our clipping. Now it's from the amplifier. Because if I increase the supply voltage, you can see how the clipping changes. And adjust the uh, output from the function generator. Here is the triangular waveform. This function generator has a lot of harmonic distortion, so you may not be seeing a perfect sine wave. And um, at some frequencies, you'll see a little notch at the top and bottom. That's created from this function generator. We'll crank it up. Now notice how it's starting to lose amplitude. 125 kilohertz well that's because of this amplifier I do have an RF filter that starts coming in around 25 or 30 kilohertz that's on the input of that amplifier and that's why we lose our amplitude it's not really a bandwidth issue with the amplifier Okay, so this is working good so far. Obviously, the bias section is it needs a lot of work. Like I said, we need to get a constant current flowing so we don't have variation of bias current with the power supply voltage. And I should mention one thing. When I was putting this together, I missed one of the pins, put it in the wrong position, creating an open circuit and so what happens with an open circuit here in your bias network well now the positive current flows into this base and turns the transistor on here fully fully saturated and without anything here now current you know I, I guess conventional current flow. Now it's coming out through this, turning this transistor fully on. 
Now you have full conduction in both transistors from the positive to the negative rail. Kaboom, your amplifier is destroyed. Well, that's why I use this power supply. It's current limited to one amp, so you're not going to hurt these 8 amp transistors. So yeah, if you're fiddling with your bias adjustment in your amp, and something's wrong with the potentiometer, it loses contact, and depending on the design of the amp, you know, the way it's the bias network is set up here, depending on the design, it could actually cause full conduction and a nice big pop, and uh, your drivers and your output stages are probably going to need replaced along with your emitter resistors. Okay, well, I guess that wraps it up for this part of the amplifier experimentation. I don't know when I'll put the video up, probably other videos in front of it, but at some point I'll continue going backwards to this amp. Like I say, better biasing, work on the voltage gain stages, and you know finally get a complete amp on the breadboard. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.